Out of the box, Klaivu is probably going to make you pretty happy. You're probably going to look through the search results and say, yeah, that looks pretty dang good. I, I don't really feel like there's much that I need to do here. But in the case that there is some tweaks that you feel like are necessary, I want to talk about how you can put your thumb or influence the results that are shown. Now, I'm not talking about changing them. I'm talking about influencing. Well, I guess influencing could be changing, but not dramatic changes here. Influence in the form of, I want this product to be raised in the Clave algorithm just a little bit, and I want, or I want to demote this item or this set of items or this type of items or for this given keyword. We're going to talk about the rules that Clave brings to the table to allow you to do that. But I want to quickly review a couple of things. I've already talked about one of these, um, but they're really important. And I want to consolidate all of that into one video here. Which attributes for search? The attributes you should use for search are anything that has text that we think is relevant. Um, I am not aware of a way in Klaivu to order the importance of these attributes. That's up to Klaivu to determine. Uh, Klaivu does that through their machine learning and all that wizardry that happens behind the scenes. So we're not worried about that. Uh, but we should pass up these attributes that we feel has valuable content in it. Do I send up the description field? Well, it depends. Likely. Uh, but if the description field is really long and there's stuff that maybe is not overly relevant in there, perhaps not. Uh, maybe the product name and some other highly tuned attributes are much higher value. Um, I called it out previously, and I'll just quickly throw this out, that putting a attribute value of it, like of a number up for search, and again, this is specified in store configuration, Klaivu, drop down to whatever store view you would like to utilize, and then come down to product attribute settings, and you can set this per store view. Very important per store view here. Um, selecting a numerical input at this point is probably not going to do you much good uh, because if you have a one or 60 or 120 or whatever, like that's just going to, uh, Clavey won't know what to do with that. Like even the smartest, I, I don't think Google would even know what to do with it. In the, I mean, it's just, it's just like, what do you do? But your developer could get in there and add some context to this as it's pushed through the Clavu system. And at that point, it can be incredibly relevant for search and there'd be a lot of value to that. So consider that uh, small customization. The other thing to understand is how are bundled and configurable and grouped products handled in Clavu? I intend uh, to talk about that here. Uh, come down into store info and click on the uh, catalog browser here on the right side. Um, you'll notice here we have Cora Parachute Pant and we have, well, I don't know, six, eight, ten of these. All of these are slightly different. We see the, the skew here is blue, white, black, white. Maybe these are different sizes, perhaps. I'm guessing the size and then the, uh, the actual color. These are associated with WPO4. Um, but at the end of the day, every simple product gets an entry up on Klaivu. However, Klaivu call it merges because it sees that there is a similar start to the SKU. So it recognizes this is part of a family. Uh, and ultimately, the product name is always the same, et cetera. So it pulls based off of what it sees as the uh, relevance. So if you search for black pants, this black one will appear, which means the black uh, picture will appear and it will be ready to go here. So um, configurable, there is officially not a concept of that, you might say in Klaivu, but unofficially, well, I don't know. Think of it this way. It's basically pulling the parent URL for this. So on the Magento side, you might say there is a idea of configurable uh, product relationship there. But when it goes up to Klaivu, the way I perceive this is that there isn't as much of an association. So every simple product gets their entry, but it's has pulled from the Magento side, from the Magento data feed, has pulled some of those similar attributes from the parent at that level. Uh, so I don't think that has a huge amount to do with uh, 
it, it, it might affect, let me put it this way, it might affect how you handle uh, customizing your products in, 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 in this, with the search results. So let's look at boosting. So we, I showed you how to do boosting at a given product level. We have a boosting attribute here. Uh, I Here's the Crown Summit backpack. I have the default store boost of 2.5. It goes from one is no boost. I'm presuming empty it would also be no boost. Uh, above one to, what uh, was it, 1,000 is boosted. So if you have it to be 1,000, it's going to show always at the top of all the product lists all the time. I suggest you don't even go close to going there. Uh, just use little tweaks. And if you need to use a little more exaggerated tweaks, do that. But uh, we can come back to smart search and we search, look at promotions here. And we see that Crown Summit Backpack has a boosting score. This green one is a product level score default of one. So we see of 2.5, which came from here. Now, what happens if I change this to be three here and then make a change on the Crown Summit Backpack here on the Magento side? That overrides this value right here. So if you're using a boosting attribute in Magento, don't change it here. In other words, that's really what it comes down to. So you are able to put your thumb on the search results and how they kind of balance out using these boosting scores. So this Crown Summit backpack will generally be boosted or have a better ranking when searched. Uh, so if we search for backpacks, uh, search for backpack, we see it comes to the top of the list. Uh, I'm presuming even if we were, let's 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 do something here. Let's do Fusion Backpack. Okay, so Crown does not pull up because the word Fusion is not in Crown. But if we do, was it Black Backpack maybe? Uh, that's, I guess, yeah, Fusion would probably end up being gray. So um, I'm sure there's some other words we could search for that would be maybe a little higher weighted toward others. But at this point, uh, it's easy to see that Crown Summit is definitely a favorite in this list. And that's done literally by changing the value here and it's pushed up to Clayview. Again, you can import these values via just, you know, product imports, super easy. And you can rule that out across the board. Um, but remember, it does not matter what search is used. And I would be curious if we search for, let's say black. Yeah, I search for black and doesn't really matter <laughs> what the order is. Crown does get a little bit of a bump. Now, if we were to, I don't know, add a greater bump on Livingston, all-purpose tights, well, maybe at that point, it would be, uh, Crown would start having some competition. But just by virtue of adding 2.5 in here, Crown Summit Backpack pretty much always shows at the top. So you can boost individual products. And again, a great way to do, reason to do that would be if you have your own manufacturing brand and manufactured brand, and you wish to uh, push those to the top of the search results. Uh, just do that. Um, it's it's easy easy to handle that way. Another one is this rule-based merchandising up here. So we can say, given these circumstances, what products do we want to be boosted and how much do we want to boost it? So a couple things, we name our rule, then we can set it to be active or inactive if somehow we don't like this in the future. And I suggest a uh, annual, I would say, review of the statuses just to make sure that uh, you're still using all of these promotions to make sure you're still using them. But we have these rule conditions. Um, and we can set based off of our product attributes that have been pushed up from Magento. Uh, let's say given this manufacturer is any or all of, so all of me is the and condition. If the manufacturer is um, Dewalt and uh, Ryobi and um, Cobalt, then, which wouldn't be in this case, but uh, then it's going to boost those products. Or we can say any of, so if it is Dewalt or uh, Ryobi or Cobalt, then at that point, it's going to be boosted in the search results. And then we have our score right here. Uh, we can uh, set, okay, well, we're gonna boost it by just a little bit, uh, 31 or whatever, and that's gonna push it up at this point. So this is also another way you could, if you wanted to, have a little more global or general control, so i.e. less control, then you would set, for example, what if the manufacturer, what, let's say it's our website is Dewalt and we, uh, or our preferred partner is Dewalt and we want to bump those uh, results up. So, and we don't really care about Ryobi and Cobalt or whatever the, whatever those brands are. Um, we, at that point, we would then boost, we would create a rule to boost Dewalt and they're pretty much going to always show near the top of the search results. So um, 
rule-based merchandising is kind of like zoomed out or global way to do what product level is. Now, going a step further, and I think this is where we start getting into the especially valuable territory, is given this keyword or this search term, what do we want to affect as far as how this goes? So in this case, we can say given a search for um, Dewalt or a backpack, what products do we want to push to the top? So again, this is very fine grain control at this point. So if we want to search for yoga pants, well, we're going to, we can just drop these. Um, well, I guess it was yoga pants. I don't know. This is why, uh, well, working with sample data makes me a terrible merchandiser. <laughs> Uh, well, so anyways, if we search for this and let's, let's throw a, a keyword in here and let's call it pants, right? Um, we'll save this and boost this and note it does take up to 15 minutes. Otherwise I'd show it to you live. I'd love to do that, but I can't. Um, but when we search for pants, those products are going to be popped right to the top. Uh, so yeah, that works out. That is a very convenient option as well. Um, and then you can also exclude products. You can like de-boost them or push them to the bottom if you have a given search term. Uh, so perhaps product that you know is out of stock but highly popular, maybe you do want it to appear in the search results, but you really don't want people uh, doing much with it. At that point, yeah, uh, it, it probably probably would make sense to use a keyword exclusion filter. So that is your overview of how to influence these search results. Really powerful, dynamic, what you can do with this. Uh, take advantage of it. Use these analytics to see what are people searching for most. Go do that search yourself and see what results are come up. Do you like the results? Are they terrible? If they're terrible, make some modifications. That said, I don't think they will be terrible just because uh, there's a lot of machine learning. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But you probably might see a couple of products that's like, yeah, I don't really think that. I don't, I don't like the order of these. So you can just go mess with that a little bit and uh, get it to be exactly how you think it should be for this given scenario. Great work. Let's move on to some synonyms. Mm -hmm.